Here's a nice fluid mechanics question which has two parts and both of them can actually be solved using Bernoulli's theorem as you'll see in a second. And if you'd like to see anything similar on the channel or if you have any suggestions for any specific problems, uh, please let me know in the comments. So this is the kind of question that a student in their first year doing fluid mechanics uh, in some form of a, or within some form of an engineering degree might see. Okay, so let's read the question. Let's see what uh, what what it tells us. So we've got a syringe, which is essentially a cylinder with a piston at the left hand side, and the water is going to come out with a certain speed. Okay, and in the first part of the question, we're asked with what velocity does the liquid come out of the orifice? Okay, and we've, we're given a few options. Uh, those are multiple choice questions, it seems. So here's how I would do this. Um, as I said, this is a Bernoulli, or it can be solved using Bernoulli. And what you can, first of all, do is find what the pressure is to the right of that piston. Right? So you have a cylinder here, and then you've got the force acting this way. And this is also open to the atmosphere, which is important. So it's open to the atmosphere on both sides, right? Which means that the pressure here um, is the sum. So the absolute pressure here is the sum between the atmospheric pressure and the gauge pressure. Okay. And let's try to find what that gauge pressure is. So as long as I'm pushing with the force F, then what happens is that the gauge pressure becomes equal to that force which is um, uniform along that um, piston divided by the area of the piston okay which means that the absolute pressure is the atmospheric pressure plus f over a like this okay so in order to apply bernoulli and to find what the velocity is at the end then we must also find what the pressure um, here is, right? Where I have my blue arrow. So let me actually draw this a bit more clearly just to make things easier to understand. So I've got a piston and I'm applying a force F, a uniform force F on this piston like this. And then we just found out that the pressure here, which I'm going to call P1, is the atmospheric pressure plus F over A. Okay? And we're going to follow a streamline. Okay? This is how Bernoulli essentially works. You have to follow a streamline, and that streamline, when it exits, so right about here, the pressure here is just going to equal uh, atmospheric pressure. Okay? Because it's open, it's fully open to the atmosphere, so that's the static pressure. And we're going to use that to find the velocity at location 2, right? So if this is location 1 and this is location 2, we're going to find what V2 is. Okay. Now, another assumption that uh, we have to take into account is that the area, the cross-sectional area at 1, is much bigger than the cross-sectional area at 2, right? Which means that the velocity at 2 is much bigger than the velocity at one. So we're actually going to ignore the velocity within the cylinder itself. So we're gonna say this is approximately equal to zero, okay? And there's also no level difference because this streamline is perfectly horizontal. So what, what we can do is when I write Bernoulli, uh, we ignore the potential energy term. So Bernoulli tells us that P1 plus half rho v1 squared equals p2 plus half rho v2 squared. Okay, there's no level difference, so we don't bother with the rho gz terms anymore. So this is zero, okay? And now I'm going to replace p1 and p2 with what they actually are. So instead of p1, I'm going to write pa plus f over a, right? This is what we found p1 to be. And this equals P2, but P2 is just atmospheric pressure. And this is plus half rho V2 squared. That's the velocity that we're trying to find. Okay, so we can cancel out the PAs. And what we get is F over A, 
is one half rho v2 squared. Okay, so v2 will be equal to the square root of, let's see, so 2f divided by rho capital A. And that's it. Obviously, we don't have numbers, but this is how the velocity depends on the force applied as well as the cross-sectional area of the tube of the syringe of the cylinder as well as the water density. Okay, so square root of 2f over rho a is actually b. Okay, so this is the correct answer for question 13 in this case. And the next question is, with what velocity does the liquid strike the ground? Okay, so what I would do here is, I'm going to use Bernoulli once again. Okay, you can do this in a few ways. You can um, do this using Suvat. But the way in which I'll do it is as follows. So I'm going to look at a streamline which starts from the syringe outlet, which this used to be point two, and this is point three, right? This is where it hits the ground. And we know that height difference h. Okay, so this is h like that. And once again, we're going to apply Bernoulli, okay? So the pressure at 2 is just atmospheric pressure. The pressure at 3, or I should say the static pressures, right? The, um, the static pressure at 3 is also the atmospheric pressure because it's, a, it's an open jet. It's a jet that's open to the atmosphere. So if we write the um, Bernoulli's equation, then this is what we have. We have P2 plus half rho v2 squared plus rho gz2. Now we can't actually ignore the rho gz terms because there's an obvious level difference between points 2 and 3, right? So this is p3 plus, and then we have half rho v3 squared. Remember, v3 is what we're trying to find, plus rho gz3. And the thing with potential energy is that you can choose where you measure it from. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll measure it from the ground up. So this is my zero potential energy level, basically, which means that this term will turn into zero and this term will turn into rho gh. Okay, because z2 is the vertical coordinate of 2 with respect to point 3, which we know is h. Now, the other thing is P2 and P3 are equal to each other, right? They're both equal to the atmospheric pressure, so they cancel out. And what we're left with is the following. So we have one half rho v2 squared, and then we have plus rho gh, and then that is equal to one half rho v3 squared. So one half rho v3 squared, and as you can see, we can cancel out the rows, which is nice. We can also multiply everything by 2, and we get that v3 squared is v2 squared plus 2gh. Okay, so we know what v2 is, right? We know it from the first part of the question. So v2 is the square root of this, so v2 squared, we can remove the square root. So v2 squared is 2f over rho a plus 2gh. So v3 is square root of 2gh plus 2f over rho a. So that's the velocity of the water jet when it touches the ground. And if we try to look through the options, it looks like the correct one is, let's see, so we have 2f over rho a. Okay, they wrote it slightly differently, but if you look at d, so this is 2f over rho a plus, and then you have 2, the rho and the a uh, cancel out, so this is just 2gh, which is exactly what we have. So the correct answer here is B. And that's the end of the question.